Welcome back, you're still watching Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. President Muhammadu Buhari is concerned that the ruling All Progressive Congress is often embroiled in bitter and on occasions totally unnecessary squabbles. He said the unnecessary squabbles led to the loss of seats in the legislative and gubernatorial elections. He asked that regular consultation between the party and the government be done regularly to avoid repeats of such occurrences. Joining us to throw more perspectives on this is uh, Reverend Dakpo Daramola, a political analyst. Good evening, sir. Good evening to you. And we also have Mr. Kule Ajayi, who is also a political um, analyst. Good evening, mm -hmm. sir. Yeah, good to have you, man. Let me start with uh, Mr. Dakpo Daramola. Um, a lot of people would say that um, the president is noted for allowing things to degenerate before it comes in to bring in solution. You recall the, the fracas or the kind of infighting we had with the, the Housestead or the former national chairman before he steps in, and a quite number of issues, which I think... I've listened to your argument. Is that the best strategy in handling uh, internal issue? Well, um, good evening once again, uh, Kaudi. I'm happy to be part of um, the show tonight. Um, I agree with you that, uh, that we, did, we did say, um, we pointed out the last time, I think I was on the show, um, I remember when, when the president stepped in eventually and called you know, um, a meeting supposedly um, bringing the members of the NEC and the NWC of the party um, uh, during the Gyadom, Gyadom versus um, Ajimo, late Ajimobi slash Oshiomole situation, when he eventually he stepped in and almost, I would say, resolved you know, uh, the crisis as at that time. And I remember I mentioned also that it seemed the president left it too late. And, um, but the, the bottom line is, and I, and I don't envy the, the kind of president we have, and I'll quickly spell it out this way. The president's not a politician. He's a military man who has not transited into being a politician. He's, just, he's not a career. You know, beyond the fact that he, he, he had this dream, you know, of wanting to fix Nigeria. Um, he didn't see, he has not seen himself as a politician. And so that affected him when the party was formed. And at the time, you know, uh, they won the first, uh, they won the first time in office. Um, the president, don't, don't forget also, that there were too many power, power blocks, you know, within the party when it when it was formed. Don't forget the new PDP, as they called themselves that time, um, the Baraji of this world, the Saraki of this world, the Amechi of this world, you know, and the and the list is endless. Most of the governors, you know, who were PDP, who transited, you know, who, who, who ported from PDP to APC, and they called themselves, you know, the new PDP within, you know, uh, the newly formed APC. Don't forget the. President's party, original party himself, and that is the CPC. And within the CPC, of course, we had the Malamis, the the, she, uh, the Shitus, and all of you know a quite number of them who also came into the party within. Don't forget, you know, some also who came from you know the old APP structure or AMPP structure, the likes of Obunaya Onu and, and all of that who came in within. And of course, the ACN, the Bolatino Bulls, the you know Akmades, and then the list is endless. So. There were too many power blocks he had to deal with, you know, and there were two, you know, contending forces and contending interests that he had to respond to. So these are all the issues. Don't forget, at that time, Bola Tinubu was being accused of wanting to take it all, you know, nominate the vice president. He wanted to nominate the Senate president, who is now the current one, Ahmed Lawan, you know, was his candidate against, you know, Bola So it, that was all the drama issue that at the first time. And the man wasn't a president, wasn't a politician. He couldn't handle the situations. And he told the politicians, he said, you know, let me focus on governance and then you can focus on, okay. you know, on, on the party. Unfortunately, that led to a lot of, you know, crisis that now they are trying to resolve, but I don't know how far they can successfully okay. resolve the, the issues. But those were the, you know, that, that's a background story. Okay. That it, let, let, let's, uh, that's, that's a good foundation to start with. Let me go back to Kunle I mean, let me go to Kunle Ajayi. Now, um, a lot of people will say that uh, infighting or internal party 
conflict. It's a normal thing. But this APC seems quite predictable. People will, just like uh, Dakpo Daramola did say, we had three different blocks from CPC, from ACN, and uh, uh, um, even four, four blocks, uh, the new PDP, the AMPP. Do you think that this is just something that is unavoidable? Well, it's, yes, yes. I think it's inevitable that the APC we have to crash because it's a party that is not built on any ideological tenet. It's, a, it's an association of uh, a bourgeois friends who feels that Nigeria is their own. And so you have a situation where they tried to bring themselves into just two power blocks where you have the PDP and the APC. And you know, and they make it very easy for them to have not even seasons of transfer, but permanent transfer. You get it? Hmm. So you have a situation where the APC as a political party is, it was falsely built on social reforms. Hmm. Uh, as at when President Buhaba, Muhammad Buhari was contesting in 2015, they gave 222 promises to Nigerians. You know, this shows how much that party was built on political falsehood. And so, when you have such a party that made 222 promises and cannot be able to cope with, with just even uh, delivering 10% of just one out of 222, such party will have to fall okay. like packs of cards. Kuli Ajayi, let me stay with you. Let me stay with you um, before we go back to Dakpo, if the network is back. Now, the other argument is a lot of people will say that for opposition to win election, they will need to come and merge, not even coalition, because we've had coalition before now, and it led nowhere. Now, this party, you know, killed their other name and came to form one. So what would you rather have if you were to advise political parties who want to take over power do you want them to just stay with coalition or actually merge and define what should guide them, which I think is what is missing this time around? Yes, let me, let me say that the issue with APC is not a structural issue. It is not because some people are marching from the south and all that. It's one thing that links all of them up is what you have seen since 2015. Open and defensible corruption. Massive impunity. You have a situation where the party is built on lies and they continue to deliver the lies to the masses. So what brings them together is what is actually breaking them up. Hmm. My own advice is that we need parties that have close tenets ideologically. Parties that truly believe in ideas. Go and check CPC before they came together with ACN. ACN had been in Lagos since 1999 and had never delivered on any promise except taxing the masses to their nurseries. CPC under uh, Muhammad Buhari's leadership took over in a few places in the north and they didn't deliver on anything. So you find a situation whereby it is an association of impunity. And so you don't expect some, anything from such stuff. Okay, good. Now, uh, as to your question as to how do we build to make sure that we have the real opposition, the real people who are saying no to all the shenanigans of government coming together. And that's why you have small parties like the African Action Congress, like the NCP, you have small parties like the SPL. All of these ones, they are very small actually, but they can come together. There are also fighting forces in Nigeria that are not happy with what is happening today. Okay. Civil society, labor, you have even in journalism, you find a situation today where if a journalist asks any question, openly politicians tell them they are stupid. So all oppressed people in Nigeria should come together and form and take up uh, all of these okay. elements. Thank you so much. Currently, Kule, 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 let's let's have a it's a tripartite conversation. So we'll come back to you. Uh that boy is back.
Now, uh, Dr. Boy, in case you missed some of the points he raised, he did say that um, the merger was faulty from day one. And we are saying the popular argument is for you to unseat a ruling government, you need to come together, which is what these four uh, uh, legacy parties you know, did for them to gain power. What was the missing link? Or do you think this is predictable, what is happening now? No, well, it, it's not strange. Whether, now, I want to, number one, let me align with your position, you know, that, uh, or your postulation that, yeah, I mean, for most times you find out that uh, coalitions help to, you know, to unseat, you know, an incumbent you know, uh, government, that especially one that has lasted for too long and has to be unseated, uh, and maybe has become unpopular. You know, but there must be, a, you know, a very uh, comparatively a strong, you know, co coming together of, of some of these forces. So I don't see anything wrong in, in what happened. But like you know, in every part, you know, of the world, power is a problem. For anybody, power is a challenge. And so whether you know it was ACN that went it alone, you know, don't forget even when Buhari went alone, Buhari on his own, you know, claimed about 12 million votes. That's you true. Know, yeah, there was uh, twenty something million votes. So it's not as if the demand does, you know, demand lacks capacity, you know. But what it lacked was just, you know, an assemblage, you know, both in funding and also in structure to push, you know, his ambition, and that worked for him. So let's let's settle that in the first instance. So the coming together of these forces for me wasn't a problem. It's not the nature of the people. The nature of the people are power people. These are, you know, people who are power drunk. You know, like I said before, even the bigger talent that they have in APC right now is about 2020. Wow. Oh, the network is messed up again. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I, I see a subtle uh, disparity between both of you. So I go back to... Know what happened in Zamp. Okay. That you, saw what, you saw what happened in Zamp. Okay, uh, uh, our network is really, really, really uh, not friendly today. But I, I, I think uh, some of your points are very clear. Let me quickly get to Kakunli Ajayi's perspective because I have a few more minutes to round off. Uh, let's look at uh, another reason behind this uh, committee that was formed by the president is the good relationship that has been envisaged between the uh, legislative and that of the executive. Now, this time around, he's talking about ruling party. Uh, uh, some would say that, is this truly the definition of separation of power? What happens to checks and balances? Uh, I, I think that you, there is no real checks. If you talk about checks and balances, it, you will need to weigh to whose end is the checks and balances for. Are we saying that those who are part that be, that constitute the leadership of the National Assembly, as that was said earlier, where you have a situation where you, the people who are in charge of the Senate and the House of Reps are from a particular section of the ruling cabinet in APC. They would definitely have an intra-class clash. You get it? That clash is a friendly match. You understand what I'm saying? It is because they are fighting for who will qualify to be in charge of the robbery of Nigeria through Asorok. So, so what I'm saying is that they are going to unite because something, what divides them is not tangible to the masses. Hmm. They are united on the fact that they will not provide free, functional, and compulsory education at all levels. All of them are united in making sure that they do not give us health care, hmm. even under the pandemic. Go and check it in all the APC, PDP, and even within the APC, in all the estates. You can't find any one of them going against our own positions on healthcare in terms of saying build new hospitals, do a lot of other things. In fact, when, when, when the National Assembly caught on education and healthcare and they add money to National Assembly complex, the president signed it. So they are united on that. What they want to do now is to try to bring a committee to bring themselves together and find a way of sharing power. It is still going to be, at the end of the day, against the masses. Thank you. So it's, a, it's another association of impunity. Oh, I think you're very, very consistent with your point. Dr. Daramola, I hope we have you back. 
Oh, okay. Uh, still, still staying on you. I, I, I like uh, the party did say. Now, my worry is your language is there should be an alternative. There should be a competent alternative. But Nigerians yes. has been stuck with PDP and APC for quite some time, and the uh, PDP uh, you know, lost the, the 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 power at the center just because of this kind of infighting. Now we have the ruling party who took over power in 2015, now having issues of infighting, even losing some powers in some state. Sir, may I remind you that in this last election, some parties tried to come together, and when they came up with a consensus candidate, they also fell out of the agreement. So it appears that the political class is one when it comes to their ego and what they seek for. So what would you recommend to all the political class, irrespective of their party leanings? Yes, my recommend, I, I, I remember what you are talking about. That's, uh, you have people like Shogure of the AAC, Fela you have Duro Kingsley Mogadu of YPP, mm -hmm. you have Duro Toye of uh, ANN. What I want to say is that all of these persons also have disparities in terms of Ideology. ideas. The only thing that tries to unite them is that this issue of about youth. And I don't think any of them is a youth. You get it. So for me, why that particular association failed is that they couldn't come together. Kingsley Mogalu did not believe, believe in neoliberal economy, in saving society. Why Shoura believes in a revolutionary socialist democracy where things will all, it will be all for one and one for all. Fela Droto stands for a different thing. So what the kind of alternative I'm talking about is for radical parties, parties who believe in alternative ideas away from what PDP and APC believe in, to come together. As it is today, you can only find that with People's Redemption Party, PRUP. You can find that with National Conscience Party. You can find that with Socialist Party of Nigeria and then the African Action Congress. These parties need to come together with civil society and the labor movement. Those are the unity that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Unity of all oppressed in Nigeria. You get it. So we don't. We, we, it is unity of ideas that we should be talking about, not the need, unity of youth age. You know, me, me, uh, 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 Mr. Dapper was talking about the fact that when CPC was there, was there, they had about 12 million votes. I also want to say that even within CPC, their ideas are ideas of the ruling class. It's not an idea that want to change what PDP was doing then. So I had explained it that even in the few states, in the few local governments that CPC are taking over, they were not different from what you had, what we had. Thank you PDP. so much. Thank you so much, Kunle Ajayi, a political analyst for your insight. Quite short, but quite insightful. And Dr. Daramola, a political analyst, is unfortunate that we are not able to get your last uh, comment on this issue. But I think your points and your analysis are very, very clear. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, very shortly, I'll be giving you my take. And here is my take. Irrespective of the kind of internal wranglings that we have in all these parties, one question or some questions I would like to ask the political class is in whose advantage is this conflict resolution? Is it about the people who are dreaming and clamoring for pipe bomb water? Is it about the people who are living in large number below the $2 per day? These are the issues that Nigerians will want to ask. If it is about your ego, if it is about what comes to your pocket, then we are not interested. Think about these things, ruminate about it, and then we might be interested in your internal infightings. Plus Politics comes up tomorrow, same time, on the same station. I remain yours truly, Kayode Ladende, saying bye for now. <laughs>